So I'm pretty much going to show you how to install your 45 amp ceiling switch. Um, in this case we've got the British General 45 amps one way pull cord switch white um, with neon. Um, and I'm also going to show you how to use the Lab AC which stands for alternating current and non-contact um, voltage detector pen. Um, it's about a thousand um, volts um, alternating current and 50 to 60 hertz which is your frequency and the reason why I would have to install a new um, ceiling switch is because the old one um, was faulty the mechanism stopped working um, so this this um, you know pen and the um, ceiling switch comes complete with accessories and so what we need to do now is to um, install the batteries so we open the battery cover by simultaneously pressing the top of the pocket slip and sliding the battery cover out and in terms of sliding the batteries in, we've got two batteries of the same orientation lined up in the glove compartment of the pen to the negative and positive polarities of the terminals. When fitting the um, and pen cover, ensure that it's properly aligned and you're not just ensure that you're not just sliding it through, otherwise you could snap the um, cover of the pen. So ensure it's aligned just like um, it is here then pull the clip up a little bit and slide it in from here onwards we're going to perform a self-test when you power it on and it turns green it means the device is working properly and the torch light um, can be used in obscure or dark places so let's detect voltage in an extension socket using the non-contact voltage detector so we power it on um, screen is working properly and then we Test live, neutral, and earth to see if it detects any voltage. It has detected voltage in the live. Don't take it too close as the voltage detector device is quite sensitive. Here, the socket is off, so we should not be detecting any voltage in the earth, live, or neutral. We shouldn't be having false positive or false negatives. And see what happens when I turn the power on. We're detecting um, voltage in the live and not in the neutral or the earth. Um, avoid touching the tip of the um, of the pen when testing for voltage. Um, it's advisable to um, hold the body off the pen. And here you can see that I've isolated the shower switch from the star block cutout or fuse box to prevent electrocution. So I'm going to go back to the pull cord switch or the broken down or defective um, pull cord switch or shower switch to see if we've got any voltage. And as you can see, the pen isn't detecting any voltage. If it was detecting any voltage, it, it would have turned red, but it stays green. So that tells me that, you know, I've successfully isolated any current or voltage in there. So here, I've just taken out the two screws accessories, and you can see that you've got the live, neutral, and earth from the supply which is on one side of the connection and you've got the other side of the connection which is um, to the appliance you've also got life neutral and earth red is life black is neutral and yet the mixture of yellow and green is your earth the other yellow um bit that you see on the on the black component um is just your neon wire that's for your led lights okay that should not be confused with with earth and I'm, you can see where I'm using the touch to see more clearly to make sure that you know I'm connecting it just as it should be. So we've got connections um, from the supply or fuse box, and we've got you know some other connections to the appliance or load. Okay. So suffice to say, um, the life neutral and earth wires from the supply should not be mixed up with the um, to appliance life earth and neutral. So basically, what I'm trying to say is maintain lean discipline. Okay, do not mix up the wires. And so we've, we've successfully um, disassembled the defective switch and we're going to un undo the screws in the non-defective component, which is the pull cord switch that we want to replace the defective and um, pull cord switch um, with. So, so you can see what I mean here. The life and neutral and the life and neutral for the from the supply should should not be mixed up with the load or the two appliance. And here you can see the earth. The, where the earth wires go okay the wires um, are quite thick and that's why we need room and um, when we're fitting in the the new pull cord switch and you can see so i've differentiated so one's coming from the 
from the supply and I fitted them in into the screw slots. And so subsequently, or you know, what I'm gonna do is to fit the other ones that goes into the load or the appliance. Um, it's, it's quite, you know, in a bizarre and, and awkward angle. Um, but, you know, then I'll couple it, couple it back and um, do my testing. Please don't mix wires. You don't want a short circuit, a spark or an explosion. Also remember that current follows the least resistance path. So in the case of a short circuit or you get electrocuted, you want to have the appropriate safety measures like your safety boots or, you know, gloves or whatever. Just take precautions. Don't just use your bare feet and wet hands to, to perform this um, fix. Suffice to say, without the appropriate safety measures, your body will be the earth, which is the least resistance path and current will flow or voltage will flow through you down to earth and you don't want that, do you? You don't want all of your blood drying up in your body so um, wear the appropriate safety um, boots or flip-flops, yeah? And here you can see that the pull cut switch is switched off and the, um, the switch is isolated from the fuse box. So if I pick up any false negatives, positives, or you know any life detected here, that would be worrying. But also remember that you know um, a false positive is always better than you know a false negative. You don't want to you know feel a negative wire when when there is life in there. So here I'm going to turn the isolated switch back on, which is for the shower at number one position, and return back to the pull cut switch and perform a, a voltage test. And you can see that. Um, it starts picking up um, voltage. Um, I pre presume or not, pre I'm quite confident that we've got two life wires in there. So um, it's picking up on, you know, the, the lives in the pull cut switch. So it works, we've got, we have, we've actually got um, um, current of voltage in there. And we just take cognizance of how I'm testing. I'm not actually touching the tip of the pen because that could lead to electrocution. Say for example, when in a socket, and because the pen is quite sensitive, I'm not, you know, taking it, you know, I'm not establishing contact with the pen and the wires or whatever. I'm just testing from a considerable distance because they're quite sensitive. If you take it too close, it's going to just pick up on everything. Okay. So I've returned back to the fuse box just to do a final check and none of the, the switches are down, um, indicating a short circuit. So I'm good to go. There's no short circuit from my installation. Um, I can use my shower. Um, and pull cut switch as, as you know as I want. Um, if one of the buttons were down, then it would prompt me to say, you know, I may be tempted to think, oh, there might be a short circuit, partial connection, or I haven't properly installed something properly. So I'd have to delve in more to find the root cause of the short circuit. And that's about it, really. So the pull cut switch works. For further information you useful, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, um, and hopefully catch up with you soon um, when I've got more, more upcoming videos. If you want to see the strip down of the defective switch, and click in the link below, as well as shot clips of the pen test and the pull cut switch installation. Um, all right, catch up with you soon. Goodbye. Bye now. Um, so here, um, it's just pretty much a tear down, a strip down of the. Um, of the defective pull cut switch. So I'm just quite curious as to what's going on in this mechanism and pull it apart and see if I can assemble it. Um, you know, but I've taken this apart and um, you know, the, the pull cut switch mechanism, which is the, which is where your cord is, um, isn't quite, isn't quite sturdy in, in the manufacture of this, of this component. And you know that all that necessary, rather than just fixing that little bit, um, we'd always have to you know change change the whole um, and pull cord. And that's because when you're when you're stripping down, you get springs flying all, all over the place, and so it's not it's not um, it's it's penny wise pound foolish. I'll, I'll say I'll, I'll just say get a new one because if it was something that we could fix, why get a new one? Okay, so. It can be fixed because with this one there wasn't any short circuit. The mechanism just, you know, was just just suffered a lot of wear and tear. And um, but to save on time, quality, and cost, um, I just just get a new one um, rather than trying to um, work your way through um, disassembling and assembling the defective component. So when I look at you know how sturdy or compact these components are, especially the, them pull cut switches, um, they're subject to mechanical wear and tear, and the you know the shelf life isn't isn't great for most of them, but at least you, you, know, you get decent ones that could do the job for um, a considerable length of time. And so far so good. This one that I'm using here 
hasn't given me um it's been a couple of months now and um it's not been it's not giving me any um faults um so if, if you're quite curious and you want to see what it looks like on the inside just stay tuned and um, for the rest of the video and um have fun and um yeah don't forget to like subscribe and share um, if you found any information in the videos or affiliated videos um, useful all right have fun goodbye catch up with you soon bye